Precious friends, uh, thank God for meeting again uh, around the Word of God. There is no better or higher place where we can spend uh, our the little time of our lives than uh, around the Word of God in the presence of God. He promised His presence and also under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, He will lead you into the whole truth. That's the promise of God. So uh, we learn from the Word of God that um, love um, comes out of three springs. One is a pure heart, and second is a clear conscience, and third is a sincere faith. Yeah, uh, a, a, a pure heart or a good conscience or a sincere faith, they come together, and together they give birth to what is called genuine or, or authentic or real love. The, uh, we talked a previous time about a good conscience that goes beyond what is natural and enter into a supernatural. Uh, supernatural, it's um, uh, returning love or good for evil. That's against our nature. That's beyond and and it's something impossible with man, but possible with God. Today, we will go together to the third uh, spring of the authentic love, which is a sincere faith. This tells us, um, both the, a pure heart is telling us that there exists an impure heart, impure heart. It's impure. Uh, so the second one, a good conscience, is telling us that there, there exists a bad conscience, which uh, it's transformed by the evil uh, she or he suffers. The good conscience, uh, it speaks of uh, the existence of a bad conscience. And a sincere faith speaks of an insincere faith. It can be. Uh, real love uh, or genuine, authentic love, it speaks about the fake love, false love. Everything uh, has its shadow in this respect. Today, by the grace of God, we will go to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision or any kind of other work avail anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which work, works by love. That's the definition of the authentic faith, of the, of the sincere faith. Yeah, we can have faith, and some people can have faith of moving the mountains, of doing miracles. You met them in Matthew chapter 7, when they just say, Lord, we did that, we... we we uh, uh, exercised demons. We made miracles in your name. We met in our churches. We learned about you. We had communion together. Everything there. The Lord doesn't say, no, you didn't have. But that was not the genuine love. That was not the, the real or the sincere faith. It was faith, strong faith, but not sincere faith. Strong faith doesn't mean sincere faith. The Lord is asking us sincere faith. This is, is the only spring wherefrom the authentic love comes out and it's born. Sincere faith, it's the faith that works by love. Only when our faith is moved by love, then it produces the fruits of love that we would we saw in the Word of God and we saw in the life of Jesus exemplified, uh, alive among ourselves. This is the only saving faith, a sincere faith, which is the faith that works by love. So it is not always enough to ask yourself if you believe that. Yes, I do believe. Do I believe out of love? That's the question. It's my faith born out of love. The only faith that uh, is accepted before God and the only faith that come down, comes down from God and it's a gift coming from God, it's that faith that works through love. It is an absolutely impossible 
thing to do for a man, but it's possible with God. What is this kind of faith working by love? A friend's faith is not a substance or an object. You cannot find it in anything, um, but it's a manifestation. It's a manifestation of the human spirit expressed in different works. So, as we read in the uh, in in the verse we just mentioned before, uh, Galatians uh, chapter six verse uh, uh, chapter five verse six, um, the Bible says uh, the real real uh, foundation of the spiritual life of, of accepted spiritual life. It's not doing something or not doing something. That can be done out of various reasons. Oh, man does unimaginable things when he is interested in doing that. And um, But uh, what stands before God and with God and will remain forever, it's that kind of faith that works through love. That's the manifestation of the that sincere faith. The sincere faith, it's very rarely seen in our lives, not because it is impossible, but because we do not come with our faith to God. We take it uh, at face value. We believe about our beliefs that they are good. I'm in faith. We, we say about ourselves. But did we take our faith before God or in the presence of God and telling him, Lord, is my faith sincere? It's my faith springing out of love. It's my faith expressing itself through love. That's the real question. Because the human or the fleshly eye, the, the subjective eye can see this kind of faith in me or everybody in himself or herself can see it as, as good. Yeah, it's, 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 it appears to be good. Like Moses said once, uh, when you said that, uh, I thought or it appeared to me as being good, the 12 spies going into the country. It appears uh, or appeared to be good. It proved to be catastrophic. So do not uh, be at peace with your opinions about your faith. Uh, don't say, my faith is sincere. I'm very sincere. No, who told you that? My own ego told me, no, that's not trustworthy. If God tells you this, and uh, we have expressions uh, of this kind, when Nathaniel came to Jesus, Jesus said, this is a man without guile. This is, this is a man of a sincere faith. Well, his faith didn't look very attractive in the beginning because he had questions. <laughs> He's, he expressed doubts. He said, no, I doubt that uh, anything good would come out of Nazareth. Uh, and um, I'm just curious to see that where from is that uh, man. So this is the kind of faith that Jesus called a um, guile-free faith. This is a soul without guile, uh, and, and, and not a deceiving soul, Nathaniel. And Nathaniel didn't come with his faith. Oh, yes, Lord, sure, yes. No, no, he just looked at Jesus and said, where from do you know about uh, my faith, that it is, it is a sincere faith? And uh, aren't you trying to tell me some <laughs> beautiful, nice words? <laughs> uh, aren't you trying to do something not good? Uh, by talking this way about me because uh, I, you don't know me and I don't know you. We just met and how can you say so much about me without even meeting me? And uh, how far was he? Uh, he was sincere, but how far from truth? When he said, where from do you know me? And uh, in order to say that I have a sincere faith, where from do you know me? And Jesus said, yes, I know you. I, I saw you under that fig tree when you were praying, before Philip came, you were under, oh my Lord, he said, my, you are the Son of God. You are the Messiah. Only God could know that I was under that fig tree praying to God before Philip came. Yes, this is true. And Jesus said, well, yeah, you just believed out of a very weak evidence that I gave you, just, uh, just a glimpse of that, but uh, you will see something different. 
you will see uh, the Son of Man, you will see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. That was an illustration about uh, Jacob's ladder when he saw the angels ascending and angels descending on that ladder. And that ladder was Christ himself. Uh, Jesus told him, you will see in me and identify in me the ladder Jacob saw in his dream. This is a sincere faith. So uh, love, genuine love, authentic love has three springs. Uh, first of all, it's a good heart. Uh, it's, it's a clean heart. First of all, second is a good conscience, and third is a, it's a sincere faith. Precious Lord, give us this kind of love, not for a time, but forever. Help us to love you and love our neighbor with this kind of love. And may these three springs, a, a pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith be always uh, opened in our hearts and spring, springing into uh, the genuine love that we saw in Christ Jesus uh, expressed in his life on earth. We thank you for this supreme gift in Jesus' name. Amen.